let me tell you an interesting story, okay? And instead of maybe like a bulleted list of um, things you could do as an artist to succeed or to make a lead or something like that. So let me tell you something in story format based on this painting right here, okay? So part of my origin story is Frida. Frida helps me come off meth. Frida grounds me. I feel like I can channel her strength and her ability to get through things and still make the art and even go as far as to make the art about the things we endure, right? Like taking it to that full level. Like like my idol, my spirit animal. Anyway, so I have this deep love of Frida, okay? So that's the beginning of this painting and why I painted a Frida. But a year ago, we moved to Grass Valley from South Lake Tahoe. And I needed to make some art leads. We just got here, but nobody knew who I was. I didn't have any real connections here as far as business and art goes so i set out to make some leads i went into a local facebook group and i said i'm a local artist i need some people to work with i'm available i'm here i have time on my hands does anyone need an artist and i got a couple suggestions for some local craft fairs and um, farmers markets because we have year-round ones here so I said thank you, I looked up some farmer's markets, didn't really feel like going down that route. But a couple weeks later, I posted another post in that same group and I said, I'm here, I'm an artist, if anyone needs me, I'm ready. And this woman reached out and said, I don't know if we'll be a good fit, but I will, let's like come down to my shop and let's see if we can collaborate, I have an idea. So I go down to her shop and she says, I sell this paint, it's called Annie Sloan Chalk Paint. And there's a street fair coming up where I get a, like a 10 by 10 square in front of my business. Would you like to be the artist in that booth, you know, painting with Annie Sloan Chalk Paint on a piece of furniture? And I said, sure. Of course I would. <laughs> I've never in my life painted a piece of furniture or used any Sloan chalk paint, but I will do it because I know how to do it. I know how to like do show business vibe like that where you're just like, turn your personality on, perform a task, <laughs> get through it. I was a DJ for a while, so I know how to fake smile through some stuff. That's part of DJing is like being able to stand up there. Anyways, so I'm going, I say yes to her. So, and she goes, I can't pay you to be out there, but you know, you can hang your art in the booth. And I was like, oh, cool. She said, you can sell stuff if you want. And I, I just, I knew I didn't want to, cause that, that'll put me in a different frame of mind than just like painting and having fun and meeting people. So I took my two favorite paintings down there and hung them behind me. And as I was hanging them up, the fair hadn't even started yet. And a woman walks up to me and says, Oh my God, I love this painting behind you. Did you paint it? <laughs> and I said, yes. And she said, I just rented this empty business across the way. Do you do murals? And I said, no. Well, yes, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I've done six foot paintings. I'm sure I could do a mural. Yeah, I want to. Let's do this. And so we exchanged information and I sent her a mural quote. And I was so worried that I scared her off because I felt like I was, I put like a good number on there for, for me to not just barely make it, but to actually like pay a bill. <laughs> Anyways, and I was so scared I picked the wrong number and uh, she was never going to talk to me and I'd ruined everything. So anyway, some time goes by and she reaches back out and says, I've been so busy 
and I don't want a mural right now, but will you do my logo? And I said, okay, I'll do your logo. Um, I've been trying to like get out of graphic design work and more into just full-time art, but like I know how to accept a gig and follow a lead. And um, it was really exciting to have even a graphic design lead here, right? So I did her logo. We went through that process. It was super fun. She put it on her building and I thought, well, cool. That was exciting. And, you know, that was it. And then I started studying um in books of like about the creative act itself yeah how to how to get art to come out how to get paintings to come out <laughs> you know and uh one of them one you know one of major one uh, i think it was uh man the artist way workbook was like you have to seek joy you had to seek joy and you can't mix it with self-care. You absolutely can't be doing something responsible while you're playing. Little kids don't do that. They don't hit little to-do lists while they're building or playing or making art. They don't even have like consequential. They're just, let's have fun, right? So I started channeling like, let's have fun. Like, let's get the joy going. And um, I was doing pretty good there for a while. And so I listened to this other book. The joy thing actually changed everything. But I'll talk about that more another time. But then I listened to this other book that's, that swore. <laughs> that swore that your most best art. Your most profound thoughts. Your aha, Eureka, Archimedes in the bathtub. All these like boop pivotal game changing hero moment whatever those thoughts happen when you're transitioning <clears throat> excuse me when you're transitioning from work mode to play mode okay so if you're not ever scheduling in play you're not activating that moment of most profound thought as far as these people are concerned and i have been testing it a little you should test it yourself but, <clears throat> so, okay, so now that you know that I've heard those two books and I've been thinking about those ways of thinking, I hurt my back in December. And I was in bed for three days and I started really turning against myself and crying and I went dark and I thought, I didn't have any commissions or anything to do. I actually hadn't scheduled any in, but there was nothing going on. I laid in bed and cried and I thought, what if my back is broken forever? What if I can't ever get up again? And I was like, whew, I was afraid. I was full of fear. So who did I run to in, in here, in my mind? Who did I run to for guidance? <laughs> Frida, right? What would Frida do? So I got up from the bed and I painted 12 Fridas. They shot out. This one was like the third to the last one, maybe second to last one. Funny thing about this one in particular is that I was booked to do live art on December 30th at this place called The Fern in Nevada City. And so that's why the sketch had ferns in the background. And now I absolutely love to do ferns. This is so funny because that's how art works. You just kind of like harvest things as you go, your favorite things. Ah, little ferns. Anyway, so the night I was supposed to do that live art performance, I painted this at home. And then I finished the Frida series and I went about my day. I had a really shitty January. Oh my God. Like the economy was, I feel like things were personally attacking me. <laughs> like, 
like, what the fuck? Like, I want to make a salad. You go to the store, it's like $55. And you just like get a three item salad you want to make. Whew. And then, anyway. And then when you're an artist, you, you kind of feel like, well, every paint stroke is how I make my money. So if you're not paying, you're not making money. It's this weird thing that goes out of control. So anyway, I start doing the joy practicing. I start doing seeking the playtime. And once I finished this particular painting, I remember thinking to myself, dang, this is it. Like, I found my style. I found out who I am. This is like, I don't know. It's all my favorite styles of painting, favorite swooshes, favorite drips, favorite everything that I like. It just it, I was painting this for me. I wasn't trying to sell anything. This was for pure enjoyment why I made this art. And then after I finished it, I thought, whoa, yeah. And then I did this like six foot Frida. And then after I was done, I had this set. I had this body of work, this body of work, this multiple set paintings. Repetition, which I learned in another audiobook. Repetition is how you unlock your style. It's in the boredom. <laughs> okay, it's in the fucking boredom. You have to like trick yourself to stop thinking about the important stuff so that the fun idea comes out. It's technically like how you stop like being an alcoholic too. <laughs> it's just like the same shit. It's like, anyway, I digress. But so one day after this, so I have this set of Fritas. I have all this new information about how to be creative, how to do it. Got to make play, got to have fun. I have a stressful day and I'm thinking, it's one of those days where I'm thinking, am I ever going to, you know, is this ever going to work for me? Where's my where's my next fucking five sets coming from? Anyway, and uh, and I just thought, fuck it, that's not the right mentality. That's like a, not an abundance mentality, right? Like, where's my next five cents? Oh, cram something I hate in there. Oh. Like that's how you make bad choices, is to be like desperate like that. So I thought, fuck it, I'll just go jump in the hot tub, and sure enough. Sure enough, as I was switching from work mode to play mode, I thought to myself, I'm just going to hit up that woman. <laughs> Sorry, I called you that woman, Jay. <laughs> I'm just going to hit her up and be like, you have walls, you just opened up a store, and I really need places to hang my art. I have a bunch of art. What's going on? And I jumped in the hot tub. And sure enough, I get out of the hot tub. Boom. She texted me back. I'd love to hang your art. I'm ready. Get down here right now. Let's go. You know, it was like my dream come true. Down to the words almost. It was like perfect. Exactly. <clears throat> what I had been hoping to get or manifest. And, um... And I just feel like if I had never given myself that second to play, to like go just enjoy a minute in the hot tub, I would never have unclenched enough to just be so like, hey, oh yeah. Like fucking, oh yeah. <laughs> I know someone on Mill Street who has walls that likes my art. It's how we met. <laughs> she came across... When I was setting up for the street fair, I volunteered to do because somebody was nice to me, so I was nice to them. Do you see how it's all connected? Like, do you see how important it is <clears throat> to follow and generate your own leads, but to follow them in a way of, way of like, <clears throat> authentic curiosity? Like, how far can I take this? And, yeah, so that's, you know, people ask you all the time, what inspired this painting? And I'll tell you right now, it was like, it's like 12 years built up to that moment that inspired this painting. And this painting unlocked everything. 
but I hope you guys like and girls and them and whatever you would like to be called I hope you found some inspiration in this and that that a, a five seconds of my time posting onto a Facebook group but I was genuinely authentic um, it led to me getting a painting on Mill Street <laughs> It wasn't just a carrier pigeon dropped into my lap and said, it's your lucky day, bitch. It's not like that. I had a dream board of how it was going to happen, laid out in my head. But if I never said, fuck it, I'm going to the hot tub. I'm just saying, like, life can be profound if you look for the connections you find them <laughs> it's like the reverse observer partaking effect <laughs> or something <laughs> anyways please subscribe support your favorite weirdo <laughs>